Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Worship. It is August 8th, 2021. We gather together from near and far as Northminster United Church. It is good to be together in this time. Before we go any further, we pause to give thanks that we live and work and worship and play on Treaty 7 land, remembering all who have cared for and continue to be stewards of this land. Friends, we are about to embark on a journey in these next four weeks. It is a journey about journeying and it's about traveling as a spiritual act. Whether you travel far away, and that's harder to do right now, although some folks are resuming their travels, or maybe it's just about beginning to see our local surroundings, you might say, um, a way of pilgrimage, of seeing things again for the first time, and how this act of pilgrimage can be a, um, a spiritual practice and a journey, of met a metaphorical journey of sorts in our spiritual lives. So you don't have to travel physically far away to be part of this journey. The word quest comes from the Latin root meaning ask and seek. This four-week worship series, you can hear people questing and journeying right now in the airplanes above us. <laughs> this four-week worship series is going to be about encouraging us to open ourselves more fully to the curiosity and the wonder, reflection and transformation of travelers. And I'm not talking about tourists, but travelers specifically. This experience we have when we choose to immerse ourselves in soul widening adventures. Today we're going to hear the scripture from Exodus. We heard it in June as well when we were um, exploring the series of canoeing the mountains, another type of questing. But you're going to hear today a scripture from Exodus about the Hebrew people when they left Egypt on this very um, long journey themselves. Leaving Egypt, of course, was not a pleasure experience. It wasn't about um, a, a journey they were embarking on because they wanted to enjoy the trip. but it was the story of their pilgrimage in the desert, in a time, in the book of Exodus, of traveling, of moving, of leaving home. And, and how that story for us is part of our Judeo-Christian tradition. Each of us finds ourselves, sometimes in life, needing to leave behind the familiar in order to grow and to thrive. And beginning a journey involves leaving home. That's the first step, whether that's a physical place to explore somewhere else, or whether it's just a changing of our mindset from to be able to expand our spiritual capacity. So our question for today as we move into this time of worship is, what must we do to embark on the unknown? Let's sing together our opening song.
side by side, draw the circle wide. Join me in this moment of prayer. Sojourning God, your spirit exists everywhere on every path, inviting us to move with curiosity and compassion toward each other. Give us courage to leave the familiar, to venture beyond our walls, taking leave so that we can see with wider vision, know with deeper appreciation, exist with expanded perception nudge and guide us we pray the waters of this blue planet connects us all no matter where we live on earth water is life a gift from you god all beings need your life-giving water we know this water also to be a sign of our faith it is the water that the Israelites crossed in order to move toward freedom. It is the water we encounter in our baptism that moves us forward into discipleship with Christ. Holy God, instill in us that strength of remembering that Jesus is our constant companion on this journey and invites us to always break open our lives and share traveling the journey together toward the kingdom of love. Amen. With Mount Birdwood in the background, our first reading on this August 8th is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And our second reading is from Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 21. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The scriptures of this first week of our series remind us that the early texts of the Hebrew Bible are full of images of the divine that is on the move. This is the God who guides the people through the wilderness to the promised land 
And you're likely familiar with this text because we touched on it in June with our Canoeing the Mountain series. And if you aren't familiar, go back to our YouTube and have a look at that series. The author of Exodus explains that the route through that wilderness was one in which battles would be far less against another nation when maybe they took the longer route instead of the seemingly fastest, easier one. And it was more than, in other words, about their, their own internal uh, battles or processing of, of who they were, of their identity, of their strength as newly freed people on this journey together. In that time of the wilderness, that made all the difference in terms of really understanding who they were. As this series will reveal to us, if we are open to the invitation for deeper reflection, the journey can be more important than the actual destination. The idea is to move away from that idea of, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Question to instead opening our eyes to revelation about, about each step we take along the way. We affirm this week that the first step we take in the journey is just that first step out the door and how that first step is the one that counts the most because without it, the journey is not even possible. Leaving home can be filled with anticipation and excitement, but also trepidation about the unknown. When the going got rough in the desert, the Israelites began to pine for Egypt, even though it had been a place where they had been enslaved. Sometimes leaving the familiar, even when we know we must all do that at some point, it can feel, it can seem overwhelming. Embarking on a new adventure into the unfamiliar, such as a new job, a new relationship, saying, I'm going to run a half marathon in six months, or a new travel route you hope to take, can often lead to these moments of questioning, why did I think this was a good idea? Of course, then, further down the road, we often do see the advantages. We learn, we grow in ways that we could not have done if we had not left the comfort of what we knew. And this is where trust and faith come in. At the beginning of the journey, we have to remember that God has always been present and this will not change. We look to the hills, as the scripture, as, as the psalm said, from whence our help comes. The divine one knows our going out and guides us by opening our eyes to the wonder of the way. Do you recall who Rick Steves is? He's this American travel writer. I think I remember him on PBS on Saturdays years ago, but he's, he's still quite contemporary as well. So he's this American travel writer, author, activist. He's a television personality. His travel philosophy encourages people to explore less touristy areas of destinations and to become immersed in, local, in, in the local people's way of life. Rick Steves says that the opposite of fear is understanding. I love that. The opposite of fear is understanding. And the only way to understand life and the world better is to expand our horizons. I remember our kids being told that at Wee Day years ago to travel the world, expand your horizons. Your fear becomes understanding. And so Rick Steves talks a lot about this, how, how our travels to less known places expands our perspectives. And so that's in many ways the main point for this week. That's why it's important to step out, to step beyond the walls of home, so to speak, because it expands our horizons. Travel for us, whether that's physical or just close to home um, in the neighborhood maybe, is a chance for us to experience and appreciate the oneness with others and the world. To be in a new place, to experience the cathedral we call home, amidst the wonder of creation. And that's not just mountaintops or alleys or museums or experiences on the other side of the world. Close to home as well. So. 
down the street. Check out a new farmer's market on the other side of town. Try out a new park in the city. Go to a new neighborhood you've never been to. Um, something you've never explored before. Or maybe a small town just outside of the city. Something you've only maybe heard about or seen in name, but have never set eyes on. Rick Steves also says that the road is church. Helping people to celebrate, celebrate uh, diversity. A ministry in the rough, he says. When we are fortunate enough to get out, that's church. The road you travel is church. Travel in a way that is transformational and not just an extension of your current way and self. Travel, if done well, can really expand us. It's an adventure. It's humbling. Culture shock isn't always a bad thing. It's a growth. It's a stretch and something we crave and yearn for. It's a, a broadening of perspective. And that's an important way that we can get closer to God. We can never run out of ways to get closer to God. Have you ever, for example, explored churches in different parts of the world when you've traveled somewhere? There are so many places, in grand places, in stone cathedrals with ancient memorials and gold leaf markers, or maybe quiet rural chapels where they never have to lock the door, where pews are worn bare with the rough clothing of generations who sat there. Look at the light streaming through the windows of these churches, the breeze that maybe comes through the cracks or through the doors that cause incense to flow and candles to flicker. All buildings and creations and symbols and memorials are all ways that people have shown their love for God. And they deepen our connectedness to the holy through the, our experience of them. And that's just churches. Let's not forget about the museums and the coffee shops and the markets and the streets where we can encounter God as well. We can not, never run out of ways to broaden our understanding of faith and get closer to God. One of the weaknesses, we might say, of Christianity is perhaps our, our preoccupation with cookie-cutter, pristine, safe ways of doing faith and being the church that elevates efficiency over authenticity that keeps things simple and low risk and comfortable. Maybe that's just the sign of our times, generally speaking, of course. The world, and then we get trapped into these habits, is obsessed with trying to prove that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But the life of faith is much, much, much more than that. Theologically, historically at its core, Christian faith is the opposite of the norm. It goes against the grain. It stands up against empire. It speaks up when no voice is speaking. And most times Christian faith is somewhat unconventional. At least it should be if we're really living the gospel. So it's easy to just want to stay home, comfortable in Egypt like the Israelites were to a certain extent. Stay where it's safe and things are predictable. That's how it feels. So hearing that we might need to take a step away from that to quest, to journey, to find our church on the road, as Rick Steves suggests, where might that take you? Where might that take us? What place might you need to step away from to experience a type of journey that will deepen your faith and your connection to God? We are called to follow God's lead at all times, in all things that God's will may be done as our experiences on the journey unfolds. Now, of course, I'm not advocating that we take high risk, ill-advised detours just for the heck of it. But I, I do think that the life of faith requires us to embrace traveling down the road less traveled as God leads. The particulars of that journey will inevitably vary from person to person. God will lead some in ways that defy logic, but that's okay because we are people of faith. God will lead some to lay down a long-time career in order to do something completely different. God might lead some to retire when everything and everyone else says not to. God will lead some to 
major in all sorts of subjects in college only to then pursue passions in life that may not lead to economic stability, which the world values above everything else. God will lead some to become urban social justice advocates, others to take the risk of going back to school or starting a business, others to engage in conversations with people radically different than they are. According to a Swahili proverb, it says, life has meaning in the struggle. Victory or defeat is in the hand of God. So let us celebrate the struggle, it says. Taking the road less traveled as we are, led by God, will lead to limitless possibilities. Hope, new beginnings, discoveries, transformation, surprise. Beginning a journey, just beginning, beginning a journey involves leaving home. Whether that is a physical place in order to explore another part of the world or just a changing of mindset that keeps us from expanding our spiritual practice. So this morning, as we have heard these scriptures, as we reflect on what we might be stepping out from, I ask again, where is God leading you? What might be ahead as you say yes to something different on your journey this week? Let's take the first step so the journey can begin. Amen. During our prayer time this morning, please do share any prayers of concerns, of joys, of celebrations, whatever they might be for yourself, someone you know, a situation in the world. Type them into the comment section so we can lift them to God together. Let's pray. God, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as 
we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now. We pray this morning for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep them warm, enough employment or money to make ends meet, enough medicine or medical care or companionship. God, hear our prayers. We also pray for those who have more than enough, but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life, who indulge in perhaps dangerous or self-serving activities to dull pain and loneliness. God, hear our prayers. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as your citizens of your kingdom, working together with one heart and mind. We ask that you strengthen us to live joyfully and abundantly, sharing the good news that we have received, offering our lives in service, where the last are first, and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. God, hear our prayers. Please join me as we say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our mother, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is our offering, a time in the service where we say we believe in, we have hope in, we participate fully in the ministry of Northminster, of spreading more fully God's love in the world, of saying our part matters. And in gratitude, we give thanks and know that what we do makes a difference. Thank you for the many ways you live your faith in your time shared, in prayers offered, in the skills you give to Northminster and in your financial gifts. Thank you for making sure throughout the summer that your gifts still reach Northminster. Let's bless all of the offerings we make. Let's pray. We give God these gifts back to you. Receive them, we ask. We dedicate these gifts with gratitude to the work of our church, that these gifts may serve human wholeness, that they may help, help in caring for our planet, that we give these gifts that we may more fully welcome the stranger and love one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And just a few announcements as we move out into our week. You'll be still receiving the Friday emails. If you aren't, you can sign up at northminster.ca or by contacting the office. Um, every week through the summer until our children's ministry program resumes, we've got this wonderful PDF available for you to download and print. There might even be some fun activities for adults, not just children, or for you to print for your grandchildren, even if you don't have children at home with you. But take a look at this weekly PDF and enjoy that, uh, what is there for you. Again, we encourage you to find a way this summer to celebrate your life, whether it is perhaps a birthday or an anniversary. Someone says, what can I give you? Uh, tell them about Northminster and how it matters and suggest to them that the gift is that they make a donation uh, to Northminster, which they'll rece receive a tax receipt for, of course, or, or make a donation to celebrate your life, your own life. 
And coming up on August 24th, as you've seen by now, likely we have a concert in the park in partnership with the City of Calgary at Highland Park Community Hall with all proceeds and donations going to the Aboriginal Friendship Centre. So bring your lawn chair, enjoy the evening of music, the vendors, the artisans. We look forward to seeing you all there. And now let us move into our blessing. As you step out of this time, as you step out of this door and any other door this week, may you be aware of your very moment that you're doing that and how that is a spiritual act. It is a way of expanding your horizon, of traveling beyond your preconceptions and embracing the infinite delight of this earth and all its beings. And may the Creator continue your unfoldings, the Christ accompany your deeper knowing, and the Spirit enliven your growing, until one day we all gather in the Kingdom of Love. Amen. Thank you so much for watching and being here together this morning. It is good to, to be together in this way. We hope to see you soon and let's go out singing. Bye for now. I said